What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's video I'm going to be breaking down the brand new Blickman Brew Easy Compact Surface System that I've been brewing with for the last couple weeks here. This is Blickman Engineering's newest lineup in the Brew Easy series of uh, kettles that they have uh, and it's a pretty interesting system. Blickman reached out to me a few months ago uh, and asked if I would be interested in trying out the system and I agreed. I thought it would be a pretty interesting thing to try out. It's uh, very similar to the claw hammer supply system that I've been using for a long time but also very different. I'm also aware it's inevitable that there will be comparisons drawn between the two systems, uh, so I'm just going to try and answer all the questions that I can think of uh, comparing the two systems side by side at the end of this video, as I'm sure many of you will really be curious about my thoughts on this thing. Uh, as always, there's no money that changed hands here. Blickman did not pay me anything. Uh, they just sent me the system, told me to uh, say whatever I wanted to about it, and uh, just get my honest feedback and opinion. So that's what I will be delivering here today. Without further ado, though, let's jump into it and uh, get started. So what is the system? First and foremost, it is a addition to their Brew Easy line of all-in-one uh, electric brewing systems. The Brew Easy itself is a kettle rims system, kind of similar to one that I used to have uh, that I made myself actually several years ago. But recently, over the last several years, there's really been a surge in single vessel uh, electric brewing systems. Things like the Anvil Foundry, the Grainfather, the Bruzilla really kind of pioneered this trend. And then there was like another tier above those entry level kind of electric brewing systems. That upper tier then got occupied by things like the Claw Hammer Supply Systems, the uh, Unibrow Systems, the Blickman Brew Easy series, as well as the Spike Solo and the SS Brewtech SVBS. These are higher end systems that do a little bit more and also cost a lot more. Um, and it was just kind of a different tier that emerged. The Brew Easy occupied part of that tier, uh, but then Blickman came out with the Brew Easy Compact, which is basically a mesh basket version of the Brew Easy itself. So you're actually using a much more similar concept to the claw hammer supply system that many of you viewers are familiar with. Now, the original Brew Easy. Easy Compact has a uh, immersed electric element in it, just like the claw hammer system does as well. But then Blickman kind of evolved on that one more time and came out with the current version, which is the Blickman Brew Easy Compact Surface. Uh, and Surface refers to a different kind of heating technology. So basically, Blickman has used the Surface technology in several other different applications. One of them, most notably, is the Foundry. Uh, and what it is, is a element that is actually below the housing of the kettle itself that is not in direct contact with the wort. Essentially, this just decreases the risk of scorching and also makes it a lot easier to clean off that electric element. So the Brew Easy itself is still available in its classic configuration, but is also available in the compact configuration with the immersed element and with the surface technology. But to break this one down a little bit further, it's available in 240 volt configurations. That's a 3,500 watt configuration. So you're not getting a full 5,500 watts from the 240 volt, just 3,500. But trust me, that's actually more than enough to get the job done. The element itself for the surface actually has a thermal breaker attached to it, which is gonna help you protect the element in the event of dry firing or a malfunction in general. Uh, if there's basically a certain temperature that is reached underneath the kettle where the element itself is, and I think that temperature is around 350 Fahrenheit, then the thermal breaker itself will trip and it will turn the entire thing off to prevent damage to the system. And it also will reduce the risk of any sort of accident happening to you if you're using the system. That being said, do not entirely rely on the thermal breaker for safety. If you are using any sort of electric brewing system, it is absolutely mandatory to get a GFCI ground fault interrupter circuit breaker put into the panel or use a GFCI plug when you are using the system. This is going to prevent you from killing yourself or suffering serious injury as a result of accidentally shocking yourself and getting things wet. So depending on what kind of configurations you want with the system, this comes in between $1,700 and $2,000 roughly. Now this system can be configured in many, many different ways. Um, and it actually comes in either tri-clamp configuration, which is the one that I got, or NPT, which is your standard half inch screw on connectors um, as well. It also comes with a lot of different ports on it as well. You have one port that's used for a kettle out, one that's typically used for a whirlpool port, and one that is typically used for a thermo well. That being said, you really can do whatever you want with these different ports. That's just the 
the recommended configuration. With the Brew Easy Compact though, you're gonna have another port at the very top of the kettle and this is for the recirculation system. Uh, Blickman's recirculation system is pretty interesting. It involves a uh, flow control valve as well as a uh, flow metering sight glass, which is pretty cool. You can actually set the flow and observe how it is impacting the rate of recirculation, which is useful so that you don't recirculate too fast and actually end up overflowing the grain basket. That's the main point uh, behind that system. Uh, and then also there is a sight glass on the side of the kettle so you can actually see the volume at which you are uh, filling the kettle with water or wort or whatever. If you buy the entire system as a package deal, you're gonna also get a Therminator plate chiller, which is Blickman's enormous plate chiller, and a Riptide pump, which is, um, again, kind of like an overkill version of a brewing pump. It's a fantastic pump. I already own one prior to actually getting this, uh, this system, so I didn't need that, but it is uh, a tremendously powerful Powerful pump and a good investment. I elected not to get the Therminator though because I have used plate chillers in the past. I enjoy them, they are sufficient, but with the amount of hops that I run through the Whirlpool, I'm gonna always really defer to using a counterflow chiller most of the time because you're not as likely to clog that. Even when you're using a Whirlpool method with a plate chiller, sometimes it does happen, and the more plates in the plate chiller, the more likely you are to actually clog it. This system also comes with an absolutely phenomenal innovation from Blickman, and that is the Brew Commander uh, Brewing Controller. This thing will power 120 volt applications, 240 volt applications, all the way up to something like 5,700 watts on a proper circuit. So it's a very powerful system. It's very small, touchscreen. It has a programmable system in it too, which means you can automate your step mash, you can automate your boil. Um, there's really a tremendous amount of uh, things that you can do with this controller, and it's quite a lot of uh, impressive technology in one tiny little package. And it's really awesome that that comes with this system because that is uh, one of my favorite parts of the entire thing, to be honest. So I'm not gonna actually spend time in this review video telling you how to use the system. For more information on how to use this system, I actually really would highly, highly recommend watching Bitter Reality Brewing. Bitter Reality has the Brew Easy Compact, not the Surface version, but it's really just a minuscule difference between the Surface and the regular Brew Easy Compact. He has some very in-depth videos that I am not going to attempt to reproduce because they go into extreme detail on how to use the system, how to take it apart, how to clean it, how to set everything up, how to assemble it, what each individual part does. I really highly recommend looking at his content for this system. That's how I really learned to understand how to use it. It's a complicated system at first, and it is a little intimidating, so you're gonna need a little bit of extra reference, and I really do recommend his stuff. For overall usage on the system, it's generally a no sparge system. While you can sparge with it, very similar to the claw hammer, that mesh basket makes a sparge relatively inefficient. It's not always worth your time to do it. So with that no sparge concept in mind, the maximum grain bill I've found I've been able to actually fit in the basket and still get a full five gallons of beer out of is actually only about 14 pounds. So keep Keep that in mind if you're trying to actually get the most out of the system or brewing high gravity beers with it, you might want to add a sugar addition or, um, or do a reiterated mash to get more out of the system. Now some people may look at that uh, 3500 watt figure and say that's not really all that much of an upgrade from a 120, 1600 watt element. Um, but trust me, it actually really is. It's more than sufficient to get the job done. So I did some experimentation on the heat up times with this. I added eight gallons of water to the kettle and heated it up through various stages of what the brewing process would look like. So uh, ramping from room temperature, which for me was about 70 degrees up to a mash temperature of 152, I found that it took about 35 minutes to get that job done, which is a perfectly fine amount of time. The 5500 watt element in my claw hammer system will actually do that a lot faster. Uh, it gets the job done in about 20 minutes, but Comparatively speaking, 20 minutes versus 35 minutes isn't really all that much of a difference. The next thing to think about is the ramp time from typically a mash out step of 170 up to boiling at 212 Fahrenheit. So that took me 20 minutes with a 3500 watt element. With a 5500 watt element, that actually takes me about 15 minutes. And also, if you're running the system at 100% power, the boil off rate for me was about one and a quarter gallons per hour. Uh, so something to pay attention to if you're calculating volumes
systems, especially when you're uh, kind of limited by the mash ton uh, capacity for this system, you might want to dial that boil off rate back. So what I typically do is run the boil at about 75% power, which is more than sufficient and that gets me much closer to one gallon per hour of overall boil off rate. This is about the same rate at which I get with the claw hammer system because I tend to run mine at only 50% power, uh, which is again getting closer to that one to one and a quarter gallons per hour boil off rate. So now really quickly I'll go cover the uh, pros and cons for the system and then we'll talk about a comparison between the Blickman and the claw hammer systems that I both use. So for pros, firstly I really like the surface element. It is nice to be able to guarantee that I'm not going to scorch anything. I'm still obviously going to stir things up and make sure that I'm keeping the uh, everything in motion, but at the end of the day, just a simple quick wipe down with some barkeeper's friend is really all you need to clean this thing uh, at the end of the day. It's actually super easy to clean the inside of the kettle, which is nice. Um, secondly, Blickman's flow control valves, which are kind of like an alternative to ball valves, are really useful. It allows you to very finely tune the rate at which liquid is flowing through them, and um, they're also cool to the touch, which is really quite nice. Yeah, you don't think about stuff like that until you're actually brewing and uh, when you're actually using them, it's kind of a nice thing to have. Of course, also coming from the claw hammer system, which only has one port coming out of it, uh, and you know, the optional Whirlpool arm, which you can put over the side, that all works just fine. It's really nice to have that Whirlpool port there so I can actually conduct a really deliberate, powerful Whirlpool. It's really nice to have a like a downward facing and rotating dip tube. This allows me to get all of the wort out of the dead space of the kettle without tipping it um, and leaving that chunk of trube in the center. It's actually really very convenient for that um, and it works beautifully. I personally really enjoy the sight glass. This is kind of like a hit or miss for most people because if you can directly see into your kettle then you know your notched markings on the edge of the kettle are perfectly fine to get the job done to determine volume. Um, but for me the sight glass is great because when I'm brewing with this system, it's like sitting right under the hood and it's hard for me to actually gauge the volume in the mash tun. Um, so having a sight glass on there really allows me to quickly and easily see what's going on. Keep in mind though, that means that you have more stuff to clean. So for every feature, there's one more thing you're gonna need to clean. And of course the tri-clamp compatibility is fantastic. Being able to throw whatever tri-clamp accessories I want onto the kettle at whatever port I want is fantastic because sometimes you just have situations that arise and you have tools in the form of tri-clamp attachments that um, actually might be useful for you. So it's a useful thing. It's good to have those options in general. Also the extra like Blickman classic equipment that comes with the system the Brew Commander, the Riptide, the Therminator. All of those things are fantastic pieces of equipment that are excessively over-engineered. So if you're looking for something that is going to get the job done every time and also stop a bullet for you, then these are your pieces of equipment. I jest, but like the Therminator is legitimately one of the most powerful plate chillers out there. The Riptide pump is easily the most powerful home brewing pump available. And uh, the Brew Commander is honestly one of the best controllers out there for any sort of system and it can even control gas burners as well if you get the right setup for it. There's some pretty amazing stuff that comes with this system so it's more than just the kettle with some fancy ports so you got to keep that all in mind. And the last thing that is definitely worth mentioning here is that there is a lifetime warranty on the system. Um, that's no joke. I mean Blickman really does kind of have that reputation of being a high quality manufacturer uh, and standing behind their products with a lifetime warranty is a pretty phenomenal thing to do. So now let's move on to the cons because this system is certainly not without cons. Uh, firstly, because it has so many cool features and so many different things that you could do with it and it's got that tri-clamp configuration, holy crap, there's a lot of freaking parts to take apart and clean individually after every brew day and it is such a pain in the butt to take everything apart. You can definitely get away with CIP on it if you want to. Um, you can definitely get away with recirculating PBW and stuff, but every so often you're still gonna have to take every single tri-clamp joint off, every single gasket out, clean all of those things, circulate through the recirculation manifold, take off the sight glass, clean the sight glass with a brush. You're gonna have to take care of your system uh, if you want it to last for a long time and you're gonna need to take all that stuff apart and it is it's a lot of stuff um so that's 
That's a downside to having extra convenience is you're gonna have extra cleaning to do. Um, second con here is the basket volume is not as advertised. Um, sorry guys, like this is true, but like 18 pounds of grain, yes, it'll fit in the basket, but you're only gonna get three or four gallons of beer out of it if you do it that way because of the grain absorption and the basket height as it sits below the recirculation arm. This dead space on top of the kettle really hurts the capacity of the system and only allows for you to fit, as I said, about 14 pounds of grain in the basket before you start getting overflow out of the basket, which you don't want obviously um, and so that really limits it the way around this is to try and sparge with the system but because of that mesh basket you're not gonna get a very efficient sparge um, and it just really kind of flows off the top and then goes down the sides of the basket it's not really ideal you'll see a slightly reduced efficiency if you do it that way for any grist that's 14 pounds or less honestly it's a fantastic way to do things if you're concerned about hot side aeration this system really doesn't have that effect at all um, so it's great to avoid that sort of thing but honestly if you're trying to brew high gravity beers with it this is not the system for you Next con is the weight. Uh, this thing is really freaking heavy. Uh, when you're lugging it around, it's got a, it's got recirculation arms hanging off of it. You're gonna have tri-clamp accessories hanging off, two other ports on the side of it, um, and then it's got just like a hefty, chunky element housing below it. It's honestly a solid 20 or 30 pounds, and you got all this extra crap hanging off of it, uh, which makes it very unwieldy and hard to kind of move around. If you are a stationary brewer and you can CIP and like you don't move your kettle around, I take mine outside all the time to brew in the summer um, and I like move my stuff up and down stairs to clean it as well because I don't have a sink in the basement. Uh, stuff like that uh, will impact whether or not you enjoy using this system. So if you're stationary then it's fine but otherwise it's going to be a problem for you. The next con is the temperature port. It's a really interesting thing so um, they actually don't have a, uh, a thermal well in the system. It's a series of o-rings that actually provide a very good seal uh, when you just basically slide the uh, temperature probe from the brew commander through these holes um, and these o-rings will actually seal it from the inside and the outside and it does hold. It's an effective system. The only problem is when you have liquid in the kettle you need to make sure you also have the brew commander hooked up and you need to make sure you have all that stuff hooked up otherwise you're going to have leakage out of the uh, temperature probe port, which is not ideal. That being said, Blickman sells a thermo well for the Brew Easy, and this does actually seal from the inside, so you're not going to have that issue if you just use the thermo well, but it's not sold with the system, so you have to get it separately if you want to use things independent from the Brew Commander. Also worth mentioning is that I actually managed to unfortunately break the outer O-ring seal on this port just by adding my temperature probe in and pushing it in. I'm not like jamming that thing in there, but it shouldn't need lube to get through this thing. Um, and it was my second brew on the system that I broke the O-ring and there was no replacement for it. And without that O-ring, you're looking at, uh, at leakage. So I had to like jerry rig basically a, a quick seal out of some, uh, some HVAC tape essentially. And it worked, but it's not the way things should be. So I really do recommend getting the thermo well if you have uh, any concerns about that sort of thing happening. The final con that I have to mention here is the basket construction itself. Um, so the connection of the mesh to the frame itself of the basket is just tack welded on. Um, it's not very strong. Unfortunately, I discovered this as I was flipping the basket over to dump the grain out of it. If you are uh, not paying attention and you don't use the ribs of the basket to dump the grain out and hold the thing by, the weight of the grain in the basket itself will pop the mesh off of the frame entirely which is not good. Um, I've never had that issue with the claw hammer system, and I think it's pretty much a similar construction, just possibly with more tack welds on it, um, or maybe in better structural places. And that's a lot more grain and a lot bigger of a basket. So um, that sort of thing shouldn't be happening. I don't know if that was a one-off or not, but it is something that's worth mentioning because Blickman is known for their quality and for their, their solid construction, so I would not expect this sort of thing to be a, uh, a thing that happens. Unfortunately, it did, though, in my case. So with all that in mind, there's some suggestions that I have. I recommend getting a three-way tri-clamp valve or a three-way NPT valve to go on the Whirlpool port. And the reason for this is because when you're recirculating through the recirculation arm, um, it does a pretty good job of distributing into the mash, but the actual liquid outside the mash is pretty stationary. Attaching a three-way valve to the Whirlpool port and then setting it up so that your output from your pump goes to the three-way valve and then through the Whirlpool, but also back to the recirculation arm and then through the recirculation as well, 
What that does is allow you to get the most efficiency you can out of your mesh because you're both recirculating through the basket itself and also you're whirlpooling the wort around the basket and just getting a lot more activity going on there. Uh, this is something that I picked up from Short Circuited Brewers and uh, also, as I said earlier, Bitter Reality Brewing, another great resource on the system, has done this as well and it's a no-brainer. Like, it's it makes such a big difference. The next recommendation, I think the basket handle needs a center notch. It's got a flat profile to it right now, which is great and easy for setting it inside the kettle, but when you want to pull the basket out, if you're using a pulley system like I do sometimes, uh, that pulley will slip and slide to the left or the right on the handle, and it won't always lift in the center, which can lead to splashing the word all over the place or spilling things. So a simple solution to this problem, again, it would just be a simple notch in the center of the uh, handle in the basket to let that pulley grab onto something. And now finally, it's time to compare the two systems that I've been using, this one and the Clawhammer Supply 240 volt system, which is uh, the one that I use the most frequently. The first comparison category is price. So the Blickman system comes in between $1,700 and $2,000 for the 240 volt configuration. The Clawhammer Supply System comes in at $1,600 to $1,700. Next is Max Power. For the Max Power, Blickman has 3,500 watts. Clawhammer has 5,500 watts. Between the two systems, as far as mash capacity and volume goes, uh, the clear winner here is the claw hammer system as well. To get a full five gallon batch with a no sparge method, the Brew Easy Compact will fit about 14 pounds of grain in the basket before it starts to overflow. With the claw hammer supply system, it's actually about 18 pounds of grain. As far as efficiency goes, they're pretty much evenly matched. I haven't really found any sort of edge between one system or the other in terms of efficiency. I'm getting an average of about 70% brew house efficiency on both systems. As far as as the controller goes, the massive win here as far as Blickman. Um, the Clawhammer controller is huge. Like the 240 volt controller is absolutely enormous. It's heavy, it's bulky. It only does things from a manual input. The Brew Commander is able to program step mashes in very finely tuned details. Um, you're able to put in profiles and easily load in different, uh, basically like mash profiles, boil profiles. You can even program in what kind of uh, timers you wanna go off or what kinds of ingredients you wanna throw into your boil, stuff like that. It's also touchscreen and it's a much smaller configuration. Um, there's a lot of things about the Brew Commander that are much better than the Claw hammer supply controller. Uh, the claw hammer controller, on the other hand, though, you can actually tweak the PID variables on. That's not something you could do on the Brew Commander, so if that's more valuable to you, then you should look in that direction. Um, also, the claw hammer controller only requires a single 240 volt plug. Uh, the Brew Commander has a 120 volt input and a 240 volt input, so you have to use both plugs. As far as kettle customization goes, uh, the Brew Easy Compact really has a lot more options for you, considering you can switch between tri-clamp and NPT configurations if you want to, whereas Clawhammer only comes in NPT. As far as extra parts that come with the systems, Clawhammer gives you an optional Whirlpool arm, uh, which is it's effective. I've used it plenty of times. Um, they also have a nice neoprene insulating jacket that goes over the outside of the kettle and helps it kind of retain heat in a much more efficient way. The Blickman doesn't give you the neoprene insulation sleeve, but it has built-in Whirlpool arms. You get the sight glass, you get this flow control valve, which is pretty cool, um, but not really all that necessary, especially if you control flow from the pump. Uh, and also you have the flow rate monitoring system, that sight glass, and then a rotating dip tube, which is really useful for getting the wort out of the kettle. So you're getting a few more things from the Blickman system in regards to optional accessories. There's also a difference in the included uh, extra parts of the system. So the things like the chiller, the pump. Blickman is giving you a Therminator, which is an absolutely enormous overbuilt plate chiller but it does get the job done very well. I will say that the claw hammer's plate chiller is much smaller and just as effective. The rate at which you're pushing work through the chiller really governs your speed of chilling more so than the number of plates. That being said, I believe claw hammer's also still working on a counterflow chiller, which might come with their systems now instead of the plate chiller. So there are other options available through claw hammer that are not necessarily available through Blickman. As far as the pump that comes with the system, um, so with Blickman, you're gonna be getting their Riptide pump, which is an absolute workhorse. Um, it is a fantastic pump. It's extremely powerful, but it's also very large, bulky, and heavy. Um, and oftentimes, honestly, is overkill for a simple task like recirculating the mash. Uh, it's really, really good for CIP and powerful cleaning processes. And if, anytime you need to put a lot of pressure through a hose, it's a very good pump for that. But it is honestly overkill for a lot of what it's used for. 
The pump that comes with the claw hammer system is a much, much less powerful pump. It's a standard brewing pump, um, but it gets the job done very well for uh, just being a smaller package. A couple notes on system concepts and design uh, between the two. The first thing in this like subcategory is just how the basket hooks uh, in and kind of like holds itself above the wort when it's draining. With the Blickman system, there's two super heavy duty hooks on one side of the basket. So you kind of like hook it on one edge of the kettle and let it kind of sort of tilt inward and drain that way. It works pretty well. Uh, and the nice thing is that they are built into the basket itself so you don't have to do what Clawhammer does, which is where you add in these manual hooks that you have to physically put in and some sometimes will drop into the kettle. Um, so you're avoiding that issue, which is nice. Secondly, with the claw hammer's recirculation concept, you're taking the wort and you're pushing it through a spray valve in the lid. Uh, what this allows you to do is maximize the amount of space available in the kettle and therefore fit more grain in and brew higher gravity beers. Um, but it is a concern for folks if you are concerned about hot side aeration. I personally am not generally concerned about hot side aeration, especially on the homebrew scale. Now, if you are concerned about that sort of thing, the recirculation concept that uh, the Brew Easy Compact uses is much, much less likely to hot side aerate your wort. Because the wort is actually recirculated through this tube and then deposited throughout various parts of the mash in a vertical column that's already immersed in the wort, you're not getting splashing of any kind. On the flip side of this though, you might theoretically get some mash channeling as a result of like the little jets that come out of the center pipe that you're recirculating through. I don't think that really has impacted anything and uh, like I said, I'm getting about 70% efficiency off of this system, which is about as much as you can ask for, so I would not necessarily consider that to be an issue. The next category is heating. So uh, with the Blickman Brew Easy Compact surface specifically, this is electric only. You're not gonna be able to put gas underneath of it because you have an integrated element housing. You're not going to want to heat that with the gas flame for obvious reasons. But because there's nothing below the claw hammer kettle, it can be used on a gas flame um, to supplement your boil with or to use uh, as an actual primary heat source. So another thing to think about. This design technically is less likely to scorch than the claw hammer's immersed ultra low wattage density element. That being said, the ULWD that stands for ultra low wattage density elements, the electric elements that are in the claw hammer supply systems that are in direct contact with your wort are designed not to scorch. That's what that ultra low wattage density means. Um, because of that, you're not really going to get a situation where you're scorching your beer unless you're really trying to. Uh, you are capable of doing it, certainly. I've only ever done it when I had it in direct contact with grain. However, that scenario is really very unlikely to happen in general with a claw hammer system if you're using it correctly. Correctly. So um, it's not necessarily something to really concern yourself with. That being said, it is much easier to clean off that uh, surface element than it is to wipe down an electric element after the brew kettle because it does get some some like buildup of material on it. So it's just something to think about. I also made a complexity category when I was comparing the two. And to be honest, this is just like which system is more complicated and the answer is very easily the Blickman system. Uh, because there are so many different parts to take apart uh, and just so many different elements to the system, you're gonna have to balance the flow control from your pump from your uh, recirculation arm, and if you're using that three-way valve that I recommend you do to get higher efficiency, you're also gonna have to balance the flow control through your uh, Whirlpool port as well. And that's just for the mash. <laughs> um, it's not necessarily an intuitive system, but once you get the hang of it, it does make a lot more sense. The final category to compare here is cleaning. This is a very important part of brewing and something that we often overlook when we're looking at shiny new systems. As I said earlier, the high amount of complexity and different parts that come in with this Blickman system means that you're gonna have a lot more stuff to clean. If you are okay with that, then more power to you and it works out just fine for you. But bear in mind, you're gonna have to take apart every single tri-clamp, uh, clamp and gasket, every single tube, you're gonna have to detach that sight glass and clean the inside of that. You're gonna have to detach the recirculation arm and clean the inside of that. You're gonna have to individually clean O-rings. You're gonna have to wipe down the inside of the kettle wipe down the element as well and clean all of that. 
And you're also going to need to clean out your pump, your hosing, and your chillers. But with the claw hammer system, sure, you're still cleaning your pump, your chiller, your tubing, all that stuff. But uh, when it comes to the kettle itself, though, that's another similar just quick wipe down with some barkeeper's friend uh, and, a, and a rag, to be honest with you. Um, you might take the ball valve apart a few times uh, and then clean the, uh, the inside of that. And I would recommend doing that. Um, but the only thing that really is a pain in the butt to clean is the element. I don't think either system is a clear winner above the other, to be completely completely frank with you. Uh, they're both fantastic systems. They both do a really good job at what they do, which is make beer. Uh, at the home scale. I mean, honestly, different uh, factors in that list that I mentioned are gonna matter to you more than others, and that's gonna be different for each individual person. At the end of the day, for me personally, I'm actually gonna use both systems at about the same frequency, I think. Um, I, I really like them both, and they both have their strengths and weaknesses in my particular uh, point of view. Regardless though, the new Brew Easy Compact Surface is a pretty cool system, and it has a lot of capability and a lot of really interesting stuff that it can do, and uh, perhaps it might be the right system for you. Anyway, guys, I hope you found the video useful and enjoyed it and if you did please go ahead and hit that like button before you leave and subscribe as well if you haven't already. If you found the video interesting and have some thoughts to share please go ahead and comment down below. I'd love to hear your feedback. Perhaps you use a uh, brew easy style system or another system from Blickman or a similar non claw hammer electric brew in a bag system. So it, I would be really interested to find out what you think about all of this. If you want to support the channel please consider checking out the merchandise store that's linked down in the description box as well. Great way to help support me easily and you get something out of it as well but i also have a patreon my patreon supporters have really improved the quality of production for this channel as well as a number of other things that have improved my uh, ability to brew different kinds of beer so i really appreciate all the support that you guys have given if Patreon's not your thing i also have channel memberships and so check those out and there's also the super thanks button if you want to hit that all of those things really help me out quite a bit as well there's also an amazon store linked in the description box where you can find all of the recommended equipment that i have on amazon so as well as my channel production equipment if you're curious about those things. I'm also available on Instagram and Facebook as The Apartment Brewer, so check those links out as well if you want some more frequent content updates and get an idea of what's gonna be coming to the channel in the very near future. And last but certainly not least, if you're still here, thank you for sticking around. I know these gear review videos can get kind of boring um, and they can get kind of long, but if you're still here, it means a lot to me. I put a lot of work into these things. So this one goes out to you guys. And until the next one, cheers. <laughs>